So yeah, man, taking it back to you know to the fundamentals and having fun and and keeping it true to the game. I I've watched you push like I have on social a little bit and then kind of pull back, you know, and then pop up again yeah. and then pull back. It, it's an interesting world we live in now, all right, in 2018 mm -hmm. now. Because like when you and I were coming up, like really the only media was print. Yeah. All right, so like Western Art or News or yeah. newspapers or magazines. Uh, right. You know, TV shows are obviously out of the question. Like, how, where would they ever put a kid mm. like you and I on a, on a TV show? <laughs> That's um, right. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, you know, now anybody has a platform, right? And it's yeah. it's really easy to get caught up in all the other like stuff, the hype. Uh, you know, it's always nice to get attention and recognition for an mm. achievement because, you know, like well, all of us, like we all dream of catching a giant fish, and when we do. Like, we want to share that moment, right? And it's kind of like a drug, Absolutely. right? You get that positive feedback. People are like, oh, man, that was awesome. You're killing it. That's right. And I think it's easy to get carried away with that. And I, I've always tried to make a conscious effort to, you know, take a step back and remember, like, where we came from. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, the humble beginnings that we started with. You know, you used to work at Kenny's Raw and Real, right? right? How much money were you making at Kenny's? I know Kenny uh, wasn't paying you that much money. <laughs> you know, so like uh, an expensive lure was hard to come by. Yeah. You know, a, a nice Raw and Real setup wasn't easy to attain. Yeah, that's right. Like the struggle was real, man. People see you walking around with the G Loomis GLX, you know, and yeah. be like, oh, dude, that guy's probably balling out of control. You know, what they don't see is like you were the kind of guy like I was that would do whatever it took. Mm hmm. To make that a reality, yeah. right? You'd sacrifice things so you could buy a Loomis. Absolutely. I sacrificed things so I could buy a Mega Bass twenty dollar crankbait that I get stuck in the rocks <laughs> and spend you know ten minutes trying to get out. That's like, right. Um, it's easy to assume things about other people, and I I guess it's almost kind of natural inclination, especially when we were younger. Mm -hmm. Nice to look at people and, and with a little bit of envy and just be like, man must be nice mm -hmm. but then you just kind of start to realize as you grow up and, and mature that man that guy probably earned that yeah and busted his balls and you know sacrificed things so he could be able to put himself in a situation to have nice things to right. experience th what we love at its highest form right yeah because it doesn't matter if you're fishing with a Loomis or a Mega Bass or you know, uh, a fancy reel, or or just a stick and, and some line at the end. That's right. I guarantee you, you would have just as much fun, man. Like, yeah. Uh, you know, it, and it really starts with with being true to the love of the game. That's right. And I think you've done a great job at that, man. Hey, like, thank honestly. You, thank you. I just been, uh, yeah, just being reminded of those days where you know, growing up in not the most fortunate family, but you know. My dad loved to fish, you know, and back then it was just like, you know, we went fishing to, to get a fish fry going, you know, and oh, yeah, you know, and uh, you know, we didn't make very much money, but but when we got the time to just spend to share that moment, just catching bluegill or you know, catfish or trout, whatever it was, it was just like the, the moments, those memories are just they last. And that's how I got hooked, you know, and, and continue to, you know, share this passion with other folks that, you know, they didn't grow up fishing, but they, they get to see, like, how much fun it could be. And, and you've been doing that a lot recently, right? Yes, with even yeah. older people. Um, yeah. Like, full-on adults that have never fished before. That's right, yeah. Wow. So, just, you know, taking these guys out from church or, you know, just guys that I meet and, you know, not looking for anything in return, but just the... Uh, for me, the return is the, the joy that they get catching catching a fish. You yeah, know? the first fish, and Real. in some cases, apparently, like double digit like stripers. Absolutely, and, yeah, yeah, you know, and uh, you know that's the joy that it brings. Is just you know we go out there knowing our target, and then learn, teaching these guys to endure, to discern different kinds of bites and. You know, um, using different kind of techniques, whether it be trolling or casting. You know, watching these guys, you know, flip the rods and reels upside down, and you know, <laughs> reeling it backwards. And it just, you know, it's it's a it's a moment to, to laugh and and you know, um, have fun together. But you know, also just you know, 
catering to how, how can I educate these guys in, in this uh, you know this aspect of the sport that I, I enjoy enjoy doing and um, yeah patience endurance and just the only only way to get through um, you know a tough tough week or tough month of not catching anything is just you know remembering the excitement that you get from that one little tick one little bite and oh even, man i was pumped earlier I, yeah. I dumped my first two bites first two tick tick on the haze dog shed you know and they both came on butt and i was like oh come on you gotta be kidding me yeah but uh yeah and that keeps you going yeah it yeah. fires you up it does and these little little spotted bay bass man they just they're just so fun and so beautiful looking you know like the colors and the spots you know, so for all of the people that aren't from Southern California, that aren't familiar with that fish, give us a breakdown on them, man. Like, a little basic biology, tell us all about them. You know? Oh, man. Um, I'm, I'm actually really new to the species, you know. Like, you know, me and you, we grew up and we were walking Newport Bay, flow tubing the bays and stuff. And, um, you know, I saw, I'm still learning this species, you know, the biology and or always continuing yeah I, I, i'm still learning so like for me it's it's still fresh you know i just go out there and just you know the things that i've learned from bluegill fishing from largemouth bass fishing these are the kind of things that i think of as i'm fishing for spotted bay bass so um like we were catching them on a little uh jig head and swim bait body yeah and drop shotting that's right, right? okay yeah. like what we would normally think of as finesse bass fishing techniques there you, yeah and uh, even like uh, jigging a, a trout jig, the oh, that's same, right. yeah. same kind of rhythm, same kind of feeling. But you know, these fish come out of they 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 come out of the rock holes, and and sometimes they rock you, and they put you right back in that rock, and you, you know you're you're stuck, and you you know eventually have to break off. But um, they're just so um, aggressive, you know, when when it's when it's time to feed, especially when the water is moving coming in or going out um those are like the the timings that i kind of just um you know spend more of my time uh, around is the the tide movement okay what's your what's an average size spotted bay bass typically wow anywhere from like eight to 12 inches okay and then you get like a kicker fish that's you know uh 15 16 inches which is a, a really nice nice fish um that's what I've been seeing around locally in, in Long Beach and Los Alamitos and Huntington, Newport. Um, those are those are really solid fish. So um, probably between a pound and a half and two pounds in that yeah, range. Yeah, yeah, and that's just a, depending. That's a solid fish. You know? And that sounds small, but I'm telling you guys right now, ounce for ounce, these are like the hardest fighting fish Absolutely. I've ever fished for. You hook a two pounder on, on conventional bass gear. You, you'd swear you have like a five to eight pound large mouth. That's right. Like I'm serious. <laughs> These things are crazy, man. They're like little Tasmanian devil fish. Like <laughs> they've got gnarly teeth, you know, they're always lit up in crazy colors. You got Some of them have these bright chartreuse eyes or just like these angry red eyes. Yeah. Uh, they're just a really tenacious uh, fish species. Um, and, and a big one would be like a three. Yeah. I've only heard of a handful over four. Mm, yeah. But guys catch them. I think the world record's like about six and a half pounds or something. Yeah, dude. I can't imagine a six pound spot. I can't either. Like that thing's got a, I mean, you have to hook it on the right gear and away from cover to have yeah. a shot at landing it. Uh, I mean, earlier this, I mean, last year, um, I was on a stellar big spotty bite. You know, I was 25 pound fluoro. Wow, heavy. And gear. half ounce, you know, fishing this heavy current. And man, I was getting broke off. Like, they would just rock me like, <laughs> so bad. And I was using like my calico gear, you know. Oh, wow. And these things are just vicious, man. Like, uh, digging, you know, taking you into the rocks and just popping you off, man. It's just like you can't it's like if you don't have a high gear ratio reel you, you can't pull them out and know? it's tough from the bank too because of the yeah, angle right the bank fishing it's yeah. not like you're on the boat and you can instantly turn them from the cover and get them in open water like you're just pulling them deeper into the cover almost. that's right yeah yeah so that's that's part of the struggle but 
Yeah, man, they're, they're special fish. It's the reason why you guys come across guys in Southern California that almost fish nothing but spotted bay bass. It's because they're that kind of a special type of fish. Yeah. And you can only really find them from like Point Conception, which is like Santa Barbara up in their northernmost range, but all the way down through the tip of Baja and up into the Sea of Cortez. So they're, you know, they're very regional fish. They're, they're, they're a species of sand bass, really. You know, and they all hybridize with the, with the barred California sand bass at times. Mm. Um, but you'll very rarely find them out in the open ocean. I think I've seen one caught off Seal Beach Pier one time. Wow. And I was like, whoa, what's that thing doing out here? But <laughs> they definitely, uh, they definitely congregate in like bays and still waters. So Absolutely. like Huntington Harbor has them, um, yeah. Long Beach Harbor, obviously. Obviously Newport, Mission, and San Diego bays. It's a very unique fish, ton ton of fun to fish for, and back when I, my first saltwater fishing experience was uh, the guys from Turner's West Covina actually took me to Newport Bay and we rented those skiffs out of the pavilions, That's you right. know, and, and they taught me how to fish for them using a lead head and swim bait, and at the time it was like the three and a half inch and the five inch fish traps. Mm you know with the generic lead heads like the hammerheads weren't even around yet i don't mm -hmm. think they were just like the straight triangle shad you know jig heads with those gnarly <laughs> like silver cadmium hooks or whatever and those guys would be casting one of those and then dragging uh an anchovy because they give you a scoop of bait to those skiffs so you'd be fishing two rods each you know you'd be dragging a bait with like a split shot and you'd and man, I caught all kinds of stuff. I caught a grease smooth hound shark. Wow. I caught like a, a just short halibut that I was bummed about. <laughs> I caught a short white sea bass, you know, and then all three species of saltwater bass. Calicos up in the jetty, yeah. uh, spotted bay bass in the eelgrass mm. beds and sand bass mixed in. And I thought that was the coolest thing ever. Yeah. Um, but it's come a long way since then. Guys started fishing freshwater bass techniques more and more. Yeah. Crankbaits came into play. Yeah. Uh, Spinnerbaits came into play. Yeah. And now it's like guys are flipping docks and pilings with jigs and drop shotting and uh, even the A rig. Yeah. You know, it's kind of cool to see, man. It is really cool to see how, you know, um, just every aspect of fishing, it, it, it all draws into the same pool of, you know, whatever species you're fishing for. Whether it's you know just a, taking something from trout fishing and bring it into spotted bay bass fishing, or taking something from striper fishing, you know just the the crossover, right? The crossover, you know, you know it's it's like um, perspective is great. So so it's it's utilizing the perspective that you have for every kind of species that you get to fish for, and putting it into you know different you know. Um, and relating it to different kinds of species which is really cool um yeah like you're saying like the, the crossover and it's like um, it's so broad you know it but is, you take man. little little something little from one species but it's so big for another yeah you know and it's so cool i can say fishing what we're doing right now for spotted bay bassing into swim bay fishing where you know i'm just crawling you know and i'm just jigging this little fluke or this little mega bass swim bait and just you know i'm just using doing the same thing i'm doing trophy fishing for a largemouth or a striper and um using that same technique for this little fish but yeah. it's, just, it's, it's the same thing it's nothing different it's it just, crazy isn't it like how, how you can connect the dots and, yeah and i think the point here is i think guys need to to experience more t styles of fishing as Absolutely. many as you can and do it all because like the guy that we're talking to right here is legit one of the best anglers I know uh -huh. and you are a multi-species guy and have always been and that's co the common denominator it seems with all the top dudes that I know like everybody's pretty well rounded not only in just bass fishing or whatever it is you know but just as an angler all around you know, we've caught tuna or yellowtail and dorado yeah. together. 
you know, all the way down to, to Spotted Bay Bass now. And um, it's not a coincidence. You know, people might scoff it off, and it's interesting because, like, coming up now, watching watching these younger guys in the social media, it's like, oh, I'm a bass fisherman. I'm mm -hmm. a I'm a calico guy. I'm a this yeah. guy, and it's like, what? Like, <laughs> okay. Yeah. Cool. It's cool to have your 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 target fish that you love to fish for, um, but you know, it, it it only makes you a better angler when you you become a multi-species angler. It even makes you better at fishing your target species too because you get a again a crossover of what you do largemouth bass fishing you can do it spotted bass spotted bait bass fishing or striper fishing you know but understanding how how your fish react to even seasonal time you know how fish react differently you know just learning little 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 bits of stuff and you're just putting it all together and catering it to a certain species and it really helps you be way more well-rounded and prepared you know um for anything you know um you come we come out here walking the bay and the, the shoreline it's like you know some some folks it's tough you yeah, know you don't man. you know you're you're you just can't fish spots anymore right yeah it's just like you're just covering ground you're just covering covering and covering but you'll find very sweet spots and then you you always draw back to those spots and you you go okay what's here what, what why do i keep catching bigger fish here or why do i catch a lot of fish here is it the tide is there rocks is there grass you know you you start to like put things together and you know and you figure out an equation for every day you know every day is different you know you can, i can come back to the same spot and you know and not 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 get a bite at all but i come back later in the day and i'm catching like 20 fish yeah you know so um timing is a big factor right timing is everything you know but you got to get out there and just experience you know otherwise you won't be able to recognize when that timing is key absolutely and and that's that's one thing that um helps you become a better angler is um understanding the timing and and having the experience to just know again just develop uh, knowledge to bring it into the pool of you know your daily aspects of what you're doing you know um, fishing wise and we are kind of lost <laughs> so, <laughs> I saw some water back there I know uh, it's cool there's, there's an actual spot that I go to nice. <laughs> no hurry we're good this is all gold yeah we're probably distracting you the camera all up in your face Yes, I, I'm, I'm not very uh, good being in the front. So that's why you see me petering in and out of social media. Just because I like to share, um, you know, what's been going on here and there. But um, a lot of times I take a long lull and just, you know, enjoy time with family, with my wife. And, um, you know, things that are just as important, you know. Yeah. Or even more important. And, um, you know. What? And, more important. <laughs> <laughs> but uh you know wifey is good she always lets me go fish when i when i need to just uh relax. that's why she's wifey that's right that's right brother she's uh the, the best catch you know so you know tell me more about that man like you you are a new og in this game in my opinion um you know we're not those young kids coming up anymore yeah and tell me your perspective on like how things have changed with the guys that are up and coming now um, that are new to the scene and you're just kind of your take on it you know coming yeah. from a new old head yeah uh, you know just so they know I, I, I think you know what they're doing is it's is great just pushing the sport you know um, but again it, it goes back to just hey you know it's not about the rods you have the reels the baits you know a lot of guys say hey this is better than this is better than that beta this works better than that you know and this rod is better than that you know what just get out there you know share the love that you have you know and there are things that you're gonna miss from other people other ogs other noobs you know i learned stuff from everybody absolutely you know you take in consideration you know they're just help you know everybody's part of this journey that you you're, you're walking and everything's everything is important to be able um, 
just to sit and listen, you know? You know, hearing stuff from you and your stories and your journeys, um, you know, traveling the, the country, <laughs> doing your thing, and you're taking everything and, um, into perspective, like, and putting into the your your daily fishing grind, you know? Yeah, and, absolutely. And uh, some of these kids, you know, or these, these uh, young guys coming up, um, they, they miss that, you know, they just see the, oh, you know what, let's see how many likes I can get, or how many people can, you know, justify what I'm doing here, and, and it is good, you know, you're putting up, you're sharing your, your love, but, you know, don't let it get out of hand, where, you know, you start, it starts being a competition between people, and then you start forgetting about the love again, yeah. you know? Nobody wins in the pissing matches. Nobody wins, Nobody. Man. I, I think, you know, once we start to, uh, just draw from one another you know there there are things like when you when you when you have experience and you learn you learn that you know there are things that you keep to yourself that that keep and that give you an edge for a reason and there are things that you get to share which is just like a, a basic grounds for discipling a young fisherman you yeah. know you know making disciples uh for you know in the fishing community and um you want to see people grow you want to see people and enjoy the sport and not hit a, a threshold you know sometimes you hit a threshold because you stop catching fish and you realize man like okay let me go back online let me see let me hear let me hear from oliver let me hear from you know all these guys that are, are been, been doing it and you just kind of just draw from everybody and and again like it, nobody's uh my words aren't as as great is any better than you know your words might be you know it's just it's just part of just learning from one another and take take what you need it's just like a, a tackle box right yep you put you leave everything in your tackle box and you and when you actually go fishing you take what you need you oh, know that's you know? a great analogy you know what i mean like you just put everything in there and you're like hey you know maybe I, I'll, I'll need this you know next year or I, i'll need this later um but not today. Today I only need this lure and this lure and this lure. And, and you take that and, you, you know, and you, you go with it, you know. And um, and some some of the young cats don't know that. They just, they just have one tackle box that they take everywhere. Yeah. Uh, you know, the the first thing you, I used to do was like, you know, I, you know, I'm an old schooler. So I just stick to my, my old my old stuff, you know. And uh, this this what always works for me. And you know Oliver brought a whole bunch of different stuff. You know, and I'm I'm catching fish on it. The same concept, just different baits. You know, so um, you know never say this bait doesn't work or that doesn't work or this works better. You know, there, there's a timing for everything. And when you you've been in the game for this long, you just learn that every little thing counts. And I have a bunch of stuff in my tackle box at home, in my drawers. I look at it. I'm like, you know what? is this do i need this right now uh maybe not today but you know then you start to start bringing new stuff in and and using that for um you know your game plan for the day or whatnot so you can't yeah you can't you can't just you know um and it's tough for for the guys coming up now because there's such a plethora of information right it's yeah it's almost information information overload like everybody's pumping something everybody's affiliated with something mm -hmm. everybody's got tips and tutorials on youtube but it comes back to where is that information coming from yeah. you know and this is why i'm bringing you guys this series like you know and visiting with guys like mark higashi and mm -hmm. doc holiday yeah. and stefan kosal like guys that do it and have done it and are continuing to do it like it matters who's designing that shoe right mm -hmm. i'm gonna wear the the kobe's man i'm gonna wear the Kyrie's, like mm. the kds not the mark madsons <laughs> not the slava medvedenko's <laughs> you know um i want i want the information that i'm digesting to come from someone that's doing it absolutely and it's got got the resume yep. that, like you do you know, because yes. that means something. Because, you know, you, you guys are actually living it. Yeah. You know, it holds a lot more weight. Yeah. yeah. You can only fake the funk for so long, yeah, man. Oh, yeah. 
you can't fake their relationship when guys that just fake the fishing like oh man i know all this and that like you can fake that yeah anybody will listen to you but you can't fake the the, the guys that love this for like oliver and and myself and you can't fake this because you know we just been driven and you know you have your seasons but you know it, it, you can never let go no you know what i mean so like it fishing is tough here in yeah. southern california absolutely i mean we're fishing for eight inch spotted bay bass right now <laughs> it's a I'm loving it but yeah i'm having the time of my life man yeah. this dude even got me up at five o'clock in the morning again you know you guys know i don't like that but i'm glad i did man we That's find right. our spot yeah we yeah. golden all yeah, right man let's, let's do make this. it happen all right